Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of the Duo Group Iron Man. Last video, we trained up construction. We got from level 50 all the way up to 68, and we made some upgrades to the POH. Let's go there right now and check it out. We got the first pool built in the POH. We got all this stuff in the kitchen here. Uh, probably my favorite thing is getting, well, we got glories on the accounts, so we have the glory for Slayer, and we also have the mounted glory in the POH, which is a really, really nice form of transportation. And then also we built this lectern here so that we can make house tablets. So now I'll be able to be on the ancient spellbook and actually get home relatively easily. Granted, I know the house tablets are one more thing that we have to worry about upkeeping, but we have like over 200 right now, so that should last us for a while as it is. And then we also upgraded to the rune boots last video, which isn't like that much of an upgrade over the climbing boots. But the goal for this video is going to be to get up to 83 slayers, so that way we can upgrade the boots again to the dragon boots. Granted, we just got level 82, so it's kind of a long ways away to get to 83 at this point, but it should go by a bit faster now that we're set up for bursting, like we just got the Mage Arena capes not too long ago. Uh, we have all these house tablets now, so uh, let's get started on the Slayer then. I've started to really appreciate neck real tasks now, yikes. Just the Slayer XP, the Magic XP from bursting is very nice. Alright, I'll take the AFK tasks too. Oh, Miss Battlestaff. Well, that's uh... Not exactly the most ideal, unique drop we could have got from uh, Superior. The Mist Staff counts as unlimited air and water runes, so it'll come in handy for something at some point. There's the drop table from the Abhorrent Spectres, so 1 out of 217. Of course, these would have been a lot more rare to get, but eh, it's, it's pretty cool. It's how it looks. It does look very cool. Out of curiosity, it looks like we've had 36 superiors in total, and that's the first drop we've got from one of them. If we take a look at the uniques here from superiors, we got that from a Dust Devil. Um, but yeah, it's our first unique that we got from Superior. Anyways, as we wrap up this task, here's a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Manscaped and their Performance Package 4.0, which is an all-in-one men's grooming kit that has you covered from head to toe. In the package here, we have, no pun intended, uh, we have ball toner, ball deodorant, and then it also comes with the weed whacker, which is for your nose. I think a lot of us, myself included, are starting to get hair in the nose and in the ears, and it is not good to pluck that. That could cause some serious damage. So instead, you want to trim it. And that's what the Weed Whacker does. And then, of course, the highlight of the package is the Lawnmower 4.0, which I think we all know what this does. This is so nice. I've been using it ever since they sent it to me a few months ago. In fact, I literally just used it last night, and I would show you, except I don't think I can do that on this website. The Lawnmower 4.0 is a cordless trimmer that's waterproof, it has skin safe technology. It has this really cool light that I find really, really useful. It has a travel lock, so if you tap it three times and then press it again, it won't turn on until you triple press it again, and then it'll turn on. It really is nice though, I just leave it in the shower and then whenever I feel the time is right, I just take it for a quick sharing and set it back down. The Performance Package 4.0 also comes with a couple of free gifts. It comes with a little travel bag and some anti-chafing boxers. Manscaped has a bunch of other products you can check out as well. Like for example, they recently sent me their body wash, which I started using, and I think it smells good. It smells manly, but not like a middle schooler spraying deodorant in the locker room kind of manly, a, a more mature version of that. With the holidays coming up, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 could be a good gift for someone you care about. So check them out at manscaped.com or you can use the link in the description. And make sure to use code MUDKIP20 at checkout for 20% off your order, free international shipping, and these two gifts I mentioned before, and your jingle balls will thank you. And thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Here's some more seeds for Spook because I'm a bad boy who doesn't do farm runs. I said I would in the last video, I was like, yeah, I'll try to stay on top of them. I haven't been staying on top of them. And then Spook gave me all these ores that she mined. Uh, she was doing some mother load for like a day or two, so she gave all these to me because I'm the smither on the team. And we do still have to get 70 smithing for the current hard diary, so that's something we'll start thinking about some other day. Not today, though. How much gold do we have? This is all from gargoyles. Bro, what? I just got here. I've done three kills. We got another leaf blade sword. Uh, 1,054 KC with seven of them. One out of 500 again, by the way, if you didn't know that. You probably know by now. Oh, Mystic Robe Top. Um, We need that for a master clue step, and it's also just freaking sick fashion scape because you can't buy it anywhere. It is only, oh wow, followed by the Gmall. The Jamal. It's uh, only dropped by gargoyles, and it is one out of 512 for the Mystic Top. 
the Dark Mystic Top. You can always buy the Blue Mystic Top in the Wizards Guild, but it's not the same. And I mean, for the Master Clue step, it does specifically need to be the Dark Mystic Rogue Top. You can't use the others. Oh, wait, I didn't even realize that we have like so many other pieces of this set. Well, I guess that's an upgrade from the Zerashian Top. And yeah, I guess we just need the gloves, huh? Oh man, we're almost out of Dig Site Pendants. We're almost out of Hop Seeds here. And uh, the logs are actually running pretty low too. Okay, I just got an easy clue from a birdhouse run and I finished it. And then funny story about this beginner. I've had the beginner clue in my bank for like a week or two now. And I refused to do it because the step was in Drainer Village. And I just want to wait until we got glories. But now that we have the Mount of Glory, finally decided I could finish the beginner clue. So there we go. And the easy. All right. Okay, well, at this at this point I guess I'm done buying the hop seeds because most of the worlds are sold out now here. I originally started at the farming guild but the farming guild was even more sold out than it was here in Drainer Village. I think everyone just had the assumption like oh everyone's gonna go to Drainer Village to buy seeds I'm gonna go to the farming guild instead. So I kind of had to pull the reverse psychology and come here or the would that be double reverse psychology? It kind of reminds me if like someone said no one drives in this town there's too much traffic. Late night late early morning thoughts with Mudkid at 2 a.m. And there's a bunch of dig site pendants made, so let's see how many we have now. That is over 50 of them. It's still probably going to be a while until we get the mounted dig site in the POH because we have to get some more construction levels, which I don't plan to do anytime soon. Well, it's the start of a brand new day, and we got a beautiful, juicy Dust Devils task. We take a look at the gear now. We have a new and improved setup with the Mage Arena 2 cape, and uh, it's looking good. I'm excited for this. And with the house teleports, we can easily get to Karen Castle because my Xerix Talisman has pretty much no charges on it. Ignore the Draymond staff in the inventory, but that is a magic level, 79, skipped right through the dialogue. Averaging over 40k Slayer XP per hour and over 110k magic XP per hour, I just still can't believe how insane bursting is. And besides for just the XP, um, you kind of make up your supplies too. Like if we check the herb sack right now, uh, we got enough Ranars to make up for the prayer pots used. And then of course all these alkable items in GP to make up for the runes used. So it's just like such a good activity to do. And there's 87 hit points. Yes, I love you, Nave. Ooh, a shooting star. I was just going here to buy runes, and uh, well, if we see a shooting star, then we have to mine it, right? I guess rip to the next 30 minutes of my life though. Are we the first one? There should be like a... Oh, I don't know. And poof, it is gone. That did end up being like pretty much exactly 30 minutes. So now we can go buy some more runes and uh, get started with this next neck real task. And if we take a look at the stardust that we have in the bank, it's 2k for the celestial ring. So one more shooting star and we should be there. How much mining XP was that though? About 10k mining XP, wow. And there's about 1 mil GP spent on runes now. Let's go slay. Yo, what's the blood veil doing in here? What the heck? There's a rocky pet too. What are all these animals doing here? Well, we uh, got a second pair of rune boots here, so I'll put that in the group storage for Spook, although we are getting very close to unlocking dragon boots. Hopefully this upgrade won't have to last too long for her. Come on, one more hit. Level 80 magic. I can't believe this level came up so fast. This is kind of like the level I want to get for Barrows. Um, because with 80 we can boost with the wizard's mind bomb to build the barrows portal in the poh and i haven't shown you guys oops i haven't shown this in the videos yet but i made this little thing in the notepad here on rune light showing the things that would be nice to get the four barrows uh, you could see 80 magic was on there plus we need 75 anyways for the trident and the major ring cape and we already have the major ring cape so at this point, the main things that I still want to get for Barrows would be the Mauritania Hard Diary, with the most notable requirement being 70 Prayer. And then of course the Trident and Whip, and then Rune Pouch would be a bonus. Wait, I just realized we have enough Slayer Points for the Rune Pouch now. Uh, you can see right here we have over 1,000 points, so... I can just buy the rune pouch now with Slayer Points. Anyways, point being, it is nice to have the magic requirement out of the way. One less thing to worry about. Oh yeah, and for the stamina pool too, we're still rushing Spook's herb lore level. Now with this task coming to an end, it's come to my attention that we don't have slaughter bracelets, which I kind of mentioned last video, that it's like kind of inefficient to get them because, well, before we didn't have glories, but we do have glories now so we can make charged glories to mine gem rocks faster. Uh, but the other thing is that if we come over here to, let me go up here to Shiloh Village, hopefully I don't die doing this. Um, there's like a few gem rocks over here, but if we have the Karamja Hard Diary done, we can go into the mine, which I can't click on, but there's like 40 rocks underground versus 
I don't know, like 10 or something rocks above ground. And also downstairs, you're able to bank all the gems that you get. So now that the task is over, I think we should go ahead and do the Karam Jahar diary just so that we'll be able to mine those gem rocks in bulk instead of like being far away from a bank and having to wait for them to respawn. And if we take a look at the Karam Jahar diary, uh, we have all the requirements except for 44 Runecraft. Now normally, you know, Spook is the skiller on the team, so normally she would be doing the mining, but one of the requirements is to get a task from Duradel, and for that you need 50 Slayer and 100 Combat, or 99 Slayer, uh, both of which she's pretty far away from, so... I think we should just get the diary done and then I'll mine gem rocks for like an hour or two. Plus, I still have to get 68 mining for Dragon Slayer 2 and then 70 mining for Song of the Elf, so... Maybe we'll go for like a level or two for now. But yeah, let's let's go work on the diary. To get 44 runecraft, I'm just going to make astral runes because, I mean, we're at 42, so it's not even going to take that long anyways. But I just noticed all the runes in my inventory again, so we may as well go buy the rune pouch right now. You can also get the rune pouch from LMS for 75 points there. But I mean, personally, I don't enjoy LMS, so it's not something I would do anyways. But just in general, I've never really understood the logic behind going to LMS for the rune pouch because when you do LMS, you don't like gain anything in the main game. Here we go, 750 points. Like, I mean, if you have fun, of course, it's it's worth your time doing it, but you're not like gaining any XP or anything versus Slayer is just something that you do passively and you just end up getting points anyways while you're playing the game. So it, it's like you don't have to go out of the way for the rune pouch, even though it probably is technically faster getting it from LMS if you're like average at PKing. But yeah, if you don't know what the rune pouch does, it holds up to 16,000 runes of up to three types. So we could just store those in there and... We saved two inventory spots essentially. It's so embarrassing that I still haven't finished Full Graceful. We'll get it though someday. Unfortunately, the Tears of Runecraft wasn't ready yet, so we had to manually train the Runecraft, but two eternities later, there is level 44, the last requirement that we needed for the Karam Jahar Diary. So now we can go ahead and get all these tasks done. You can see the XP rate up here is like 45 minutes for this. Oh, there's a shooting star there. I will not give in to the temptation. Wow, look at me, I'm an epic PKer. That's it. Type out toxic message. There we go. When I should have said sit dog. Well, that works. Yeah, this might take a while for her to get the task done. <laughs> I guess she didn't bring any weapon. Or I should probably like remove all this gear and stuff. Okay, look, I know some people might be into this, but not me, okay? I swear it's it's for a diary. Last two tasks we gotta do is eat an Umli wrap and then just grab a task from Duradel. Okay, we got the blink number of the heck hounds of the spook dogs. And that is the last task done. Let's go claim the reward. I'll put all the rewards up on screen, but I mean, it's pretty much just what I mentioned already. So we get the Karamja Gloves 3, which you can see right here, uh, gives us unlimited teleports to the gem mine. And just having the diary done even gives us access to this gem mine in the first place. And besides for just like being able to mine these rocks now, it's also a relatively decent way to get to Duradel because uh, he's right up here. So it's a little bit of a run, but the way I would get to Neve was teleport to the GE, then run to the spirit tree, then run from the spirit tree to her. So it's probably not too much of a difference in terms of the distance. I told Spook to give me her glory just so I could charge it too. I meant to bring the ring of wealth as well, but it doesn't really matter. Let's just go ahead and charge these up. And for whatever reason, I made it so that you need a charge glory. It specifically has to be charged um, in order to mine gem rocks faster when you have it equipped. So now we can mine the gem rocks. And now uh, we got the XP lamp as well. So put them to herb lore for 10,000 XP. Wait, is that an herb level? Yeah, it's 61 herb lore. Um, it's also the first hard diary that we have done on the account. So it's pretty cool too. Now let's go start mining some gem rocks. And let me tell you, these gem rocks change everything for making slaughter bracelets. He said the thing, he said, he said the thing. Okay, so. Uh, what we're going to be going for here is as many red topazes as possible because that's what we need to make the slaughter bracelets But I'm not going to be dropping the other ones I'll just be banking all these because um, right over here is a deposit box So we can just deposit everything right into the bank. You can't bank here, but you can just deposit it all It's not like a big deal to get back to the bank though. I just teleport to the GE But yeah, if I just go in a circle like around that way by the time I get there, my inventory should be almost full. Uh, I think I'll just deposit like the rune pouch as well. I could just run to the bank from here. It's faster than like clicking on each of the different types to deposit them. And we'll probably be here for a little while anyways. And there's 66 mining. Ooh, this was a pretty lucky inventory of the topaz. I think it's a sign that we should cut it off here. Uh, you can see I spent a little bit over an hour mining and it was just over 34k XP per hour. But of course, the higher the mining level, the more XP per hour you're going to get. Let's go to the bank and see how many gems we mined. So we'll deposit all these and type uncut. So 90T red topaz. 
and then all the other gems you could see too. I'm going to have Spook cut the red topaz for me because there is a chance that you can crush it when you're crafting it and then you can't use it. And the chance of crushing it is based on your crafting level. And she has, I think like 70, what, 76 crafting and I have 65. So she'll cut them for me, then I'll make them into the bracelets. Ooh, 95 strength. Oh, it's getting up there, huh? Every once in a while, I randomly stumble upon a gang meeting and they have some pretty decent drops like planks. I know Spook still has to get her construction up so the oak planks will help her. Cosmic runes are kind of hard to come by at this point and then the intelligence we can trade in for combat XP. Nice, strength XP, strength XP, strength XP, strength XP, easy. Oh, a cosmic talisman. We need that for something, don't we? Is it? Wait, hold, let me check. I thought there was something, maybe not. I mean, there's diary tasks to craft cosmic runes, but you don't specifically need a talisman for that. You could just use the abyss. Is that the first cosmic talisman on the account though? It is. Well, we'll find some kind of use for it maybe. Hey, 83 Slayer. So of course, 83 Slayer is the level we unlock spiritual mages, which is what dropped the dragon boots. But I'm not gonna be going straight for them off task because they're kind of just like a marginal increase over the rune boots. They're a plus four strength bonus instead of just plus two. So I really feel like it's not worth going out of the way doing them off task when I'm inevitably gonna get the task eventually anyways. So later on, I'll be getting Slayer XP when I'm killing them. Plus the fact that I'll be going for two of them since Spook is going to need a pair as well. So I'll just wait till we get a spiritual creature slayer task before I actually go for them. Well, that's the end of the first Duradel task. Uh, you can see we got 15 slayer points versus Neve previously who would only give 12 points per slayer task. So I think I'll be using Duradel from now on because the run, like I said before, isn't too far from the Karamja Gloves teleport. So Spook actually ended up making those red topazes, not just cutting them, but making them into the slaughter bracelets. So there we go, the first ever slaughter bracelets on the account. If you don't know what these do, they give you a 25% chance of when you kill a monster, if you have it equipped, uh, that the monster will not count towards your slayer task. Um, but because of the way like numbers work, you also get 25% chance on the 25% of monsters that you save um, to also be saved, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it comes out to extending your task by 33%, not 25%. So I'm glad we have those now. I'll be using those for burst tasks. Only downside is that I won't be using Barrow's Gloves then, but actually I guess then again, because your accuracy doesn't matter. If I had Tormented, this would be a downgrade, but for Barrow's Gloves, I guess that wouldn't be a downgrade, would it? Forgot to mention, the Slaughter Bracelets each only have 30 charges. It's not unlimited. Um, it's not per kill, it's like for each time that it procs and it saves you a kill is when it loses a charge. Wow, I just found the coolest plugin from the plugin hub. It's called Inventory Setups. You pretty much just press plus to save and then it kind of like screenshots the items that you have equipped and the items in your inventory. And then you could like view it so you could see this is what I have right now. And then if you go into the bank, you can right click this, open setup, and then all the items are right here. This is so freaking sick, dude. Anyways, here's the new setup with the rune pouch now and with the slaughter bracelets. A couple of new upgrades that we have for bursting. What? Wait, there's another dust bell staff in here. What? That's the second dust bell staff that we've got from dust devils. We didn't get it from a superior. Uh, the first one was... Uh... Just from Dust Devils, I'm looking up the drop rate right now because uh, I forgot. It's one out of 4K again. What? <laughs> Can't believe I'm wasting my RNG like this, dude. I guess now me and Spook can each have one at the same time instead of like trading it back and forth. Oh god, this account's gonna be so unlucky for drops that I actually want to get, not like these pointless rare drops. Dust Battle Staff, more like the Dry Me Staff. No, the gamer log. Now's not a good time. I've like, I've got like a rhythm going here. I believe for each of these burst tasks, um, with them extended for the Dust Devils neck reels, I, I think on average you would expect to go through two and a half slaughter bracelets. Interesting place to get a crafting level, again from uh, building a birdhouse. It is time for the Tears of RC, level 44 to level 45. So yeah, one level. Oh my lord. Look at that absolute champion. Fun little fact, you can actually spawn a superior on the last kill of your task. Um, so then you finish the task, as you can see, I don't have a Slayer assignment, but I can still kill it and you'll see we get the Slayer XP drop. And there's the 2.5k XP and the imbued heart. Just kidding. I bet I made you look at the screen. And that's 65 farming, which means we can now plant Hispori and uh, enter the medium tier, the mid tier of the farming guild, which I believe you can enter if you just boost, like with the garden pie or something, which I haven't done. Um, but 74 farming is one of the requirements for the Kren Hard Diary, or I guess 71 with the garden pie, so 
I'm trying to do my farm runs here and there because that Ash Sanctifier, as I've mentioned multiple times, would be pretty nice to have. With this superior, another thing you could do, because you don't want them to melee you, is you could just like use the other neck reels. If you don't have them stacked up, you can use them to just like block him from going forward. Or if he's like right on top of you, you can go up here and because he's so big, he can't like make it through the space, so you can just like be safe over here. Oh my god. <laughs> Why, why, dude? Why? <laughs> uh, this account's like cursed with the dust battle stabs. I had a similar thing happen on the UYM. I got uh, like three, two or three dust battle stabs from superiors, like really close together. Hmm. I wonder what this means. What is the game trying to tell me? Maybe I was supposed to name the account Dry Dust Kip or something. Well, one more hit. There is 81 magic. Man, these magic levels are just flying by bursting. Man, that just seems ridiculous. 70,000 XP from one Slayer task. The whole last couple of videos is pretty much me just being in awe of how sick Slayer bursting is. As a kid, I was always really scared of this random because I thought it was just like one big monstrosity like a human centipede or something. Can you believe this is the first Karas task I've gotten and we're all the way up to 83 Slayer at this point. The requirement is level 70. Hopefully we can get a Leaf Blade Axe. It's about a 1 out of 1k drop though, so probably not going to happen today. Oh, what's this? Master of Broad Weaponry. Kill a Karas. Very simple. 88 hit points. Oh my gosh. Big fan of your son. Bro... <laughs> 76 KC. Well, the, the RNG streak continues, I guess. This is uh, actually something pretty decent to get lucky for. It is one tick slower. It's a five tick weapon instead of a four tick weapon. But yeah, you can see like the difference in the melee strength between the two. So this is a, a very nice upgrade to get. Probably end using this for like Calphite Queen early on or maybe Gargoyles or something. Stuff that's weak to crush. 54, oh my god. We just got this, I just, uh, oh, a new collection log item. Mystic Rope Top, the light one, which you also can't buy anywhere. Only dropped by Kurasks and from the Alchemical Hydra Boss. All right, well, after getting the Leaf Blade Battle Axe and uh, all those burst tasks and everything, I think this is a good place to wrap up the video. We are currently under 100K from 84 Slayer. And you know what? I think next video, we should go for the whip. You can check out my Duo Teammate Spook Dogs channel, which is linked in every video description. And uh, here's this page as well if you want to see what it's looking like. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope that you have a great day. And I will see you again next time.